Okay, so let us begin. Uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you for joining the session. Um, and uh, let's continue with our next topic. So today's topic is related to planning. Conjunction-based planning. So what we have done so far, we have done purchasing, we have done inventory management, we have done warehouse management. And now this is our next topic which we call conjunction-based planning. Conjunction-based planning is not production planning. So we have production planning, and that production planning is a separate topic. Production planning is a part of production. What we are talking about here is conjunction-based planning. So three words, conjunction-based planning. So conception-based planning is normally being used for planning C-class, D-class items. So normally you have a maintenance item, repair item, operational items, so regular consumable items which is not necessarily going into the production which is being used in the company for various other regions. For example, for the region of maintenance, for the region of repair, for the region of running operations. So many such reasons, we need a lot of material items. For those kind of materials and items, in SAP, we can use conception based planning. So all these notes which I'm giving, you can make a note of those points as well, and uh, you can keep writing these points as well. So when we talk about the based planning, in that there are three material requirement planning procedure, three. Planning procedure tells me how the planning should be done. So material requirement planning, MRP will tell how the planning would be done, how part, okay? So there is a how part of it. Okay. Then we have a something other than, other than that, and we will talk about uh, what are these three planning procedures are. So among the planning procedures, you should uh, make note that is something called reorder point planning procedure. Now, all these different procedures are assigned to the material master in MRP view. In the material master, there is an MRP view. And then in the material master, in the MRP view, we assign these planning procedures, all of them. Now, how do we assign, where it is being assigned? That we will talk, that exercise we have, and that exercise we're gonna discuss, we're gonna do. So first and foremost is a reorder point planning procedure. And uh, it is VV. VV is the key which is assigned in Metal Master. The second is forecast-based planning procedure. Okay. In the forecast-based planning procedure, you are basically doing the forecasting based upon the past conjunction. That is the second procedure. And you can assign that procedure also in the material master. The third one is, third um, uh, MRP procedure is called time phased planning procedure. And that key for the time phased planning procedure is R1. So VV is a, uh, the key which is assigned to reorder point planning in material master. VV 
is a uh, time phase planning procedure which is assigned in material master. R1 is a uh, procedure which is assigned in a material master. Now, when we talk about reorder point planning procedure, in the reorder point planning procedure, there are actually two categories. One, if you see here, is the manual, and the second one is automated. Now, what is the meaning of them and what are the differences? So when we talk about uh, manual reorder point planning procedure, in this case, what happens is, in this case, what happens is, we have something called reorder level and reorder point, okay? So we have something called reorder level and reorder point. So reorder level and reorder point and the safety stock are maintained by the user manually in the material master. So that basically means user, business user, on the basis of his and her understanding of the conception of that material, okay, I consume this material 100 pieces and this 5,000 pieces, this is 2,000 pieces, this is only five pieces. So the person who is working in a warehouse, they have an idea that how much of that item, how much of that material is being consumed, okay? So in manual reorder point planning procedure, and as it is a manual reorder plant planning procedure, that reorder label and reorder point and safety stock are maintained by the user manually in material master. How do we do that? We're gonna see that. We're gonna do this exercise. Now the second one here, we call it reorder point planning procedure. So in the reorder point planning procedure basically means automatic reorder point. Because this is automatic, in this case, Reorder label, reorder point, and safety stock are maintained by the SAP system automatically. So SAP system knows how much this item has been consumed, how much this item has been consumed, how much this item has been consumed, because every item's consumption history is there in SAP. And because item's history is there, in SAP, therefore SAP knows how much an item has been consumed. So what system does, that on the basis of reorder level, reorder point and safety stock of the material, system automatically set up reorder level, reorder point on the basis of past conception history. So system take past conception history and on the basis of that past conception history, system automatically set up reorder level, reorder point and safety stock in the material master. So that is the fundamental primary difference between the two. In one case, it is done by the user. In second case, it is done by the business. Okay. So that is the primary difference between the two. Okay. So here we have the second point That is called the forecast based planning. So this is the reorder point planning in which we have two planning procedures. One is the manual, second one is automatic. And the next one is the forecast based plan. In the forecast based planning, what system do? In this case, system uses his 
historical values and forecast values and then on the basis of historical values and forecast values system determine future requirement you can say okay tell me in the last uh, 12 month what is my forecast has been and what is my conception has been then based upon my last 6 month last 6 weeks last 12 weeks last 12 month whatever the time period is we can determine the future requirement based upon integrated forecasting program in material master so in the material master this forecasting is been done so all these planning procedures reorder level reorder point safety stock all these planning procedure forecast based planning procedure reorder point planning procedure everything is assigned in material master in mrps okay the third planning procedure is called time phased planning time phased now what is the time phased planning basically time phased planning basically means that uh, in certain cases vendor has certain periodicity which basically means the vendor supply the material only on the basis of certain periodicity so on the basis of certain periodicity we define that okay this material is only available on every um so this material is available on every wednesday so if this material is available on every wednesday so that basically means that when i'm defining how much material i need so basically i'm defining the material what i need for one week i i can have this material only on the 20th of every month okay. so i can have this material only on the 20th of the month so how much i need so i need the material what i'm going to consume on every month till the 20th arrive so that is where we have a time phased planning because in the time phased planning material is only available on certain time frequency so that is where time phase planning procedure come into the picture now we talked about planning procedure so there are three planning procedure we talked about rear to point planning we talked about the forecast based planning we talked about the time phase planning and now we have something called lot sizing procedure in the lot sizing procedure it tells me how much i need so lot sizing procedure tells me how much i need how much procedure tells me how i plan lot sizing tell me how much i need quantity in the lot sizing procedure there are some static there are static lot sizing procedure in the static lot sizing procedure there is a first is a fixed lot size second is a lot for lot third is a replenishment up to maximum stock now what is that basically means so in the fixed lot size a material is only available in certain fixed quantity for example when we are buying in the material it is coming in a box and because this material is coming in a box therefore i can only buy in the multiple of the box i can buy one box i can buy two box i can buy three box i can buy four box but i can only buy in the multiple of the box So when I'm buying, I buy in the multiple 
of boxes because box is a fixed lot size. Then we have a lot for lot. Lot for lot basically means exact quantity. So let's say I need, uh, I have a stock of 200, I need 1000, then how much I need? I need 800. So that is comes as a lot or lot. Then we have uh, something called replenishment up to maximum stock. Now what is the example of a replenishment up to maximum stock level? That basically means it is being used like, for example, we have some kind of a container box, etc. Right? So if you have some kind of a container box, like a gasoline container, so when somebody comes to fix it, what happens that it will basically come, the supply will come and it fix up the inventory level till the very top. So that is called replacement up to the maximum level. So for example, like your container or something like that, and during those containers, etc., you can have a replenishment up to maximum stock. Okay. And then you have a, in the bottom, something called periodic load sizing procedure. Periodic load sizing procedure you define on the basis of periodicity. Now, what does that basically mean? based upon periodicity. So daily lot size. So daily lot size basically means how much I need for it every day. Sometimes in a repeat manufacturing sector, how much you take, you take how much I need for a day. Weekly lot size. How much I need? I need how much I need for consume for a week. So whatever I need to consume this material for a week, that become my quantity. Monthly lot size, how much I need? I need quantity which I can consume for a month. Lot size according to the flexible period month means I need for 15 days. So what we have discussed in this, the continuous planning, first and foremost is used for the purpose of, not for the purpose of production planning. It is not for the use for production function. Production planning is different. This is being used for the purpose of defining C class, D class, low value items, like a maintenance item, like a repair items, like operation item, packaging item, etc. Then we talked about that uh, there are three planning procedures. Planning procedure means how the planning happens, the calculation procedure. So in that we decide, we describe there's a reorder point planning, forecast based planning, time based planning. A lot of people use reorder point planning. So the one thing which is probably the most common and most often used is reorder point planning procedure. That is the method is VB. And then you use forecast based planning, which is VB. Then time phase planning, R1. Okay. And then we discuss what is there, and then we talk about the lot sizing procedure. Lot sizing procedure tells me that how much I need. So let's do some exercise to understand that. Okay. So let us do some exercise. So I want to do exercise, planning exercise. In the planning exercise, I wanted to take a planning procedure equals to BV, which is a reorder level planning. Reorder level and reorder point planning. And then I want to take lot sizing key equals to fix lot.
So that is what we want to do it. For that, I want to create a material master with MRB views. Then run MRP. You can run MRP with the transaction code MD02, MD03. There are two transactions. You can evaluate the result of MRP run. that you can do with the transition code MD04. Okay, make a note of these steps. Okay, make a note of these steps, please. Okay. So now let's create a material. So simple material MM01. Raw material ROH. Hit enter. Seated one purchasing, and I select MRP view. We select MRP view. Then we hit enter. It is a thousand and zero zero one. Hit enter. We can say it is a whatever. I can put any description, MRP material. We enter the unit of measure, enter the material group, enter the purchasing group. Now this is the MRP view. Now we were talking about here that we have a reorder point planning VV. Yeah? VV is a material point planning or MRP. Okay. And then uh, we have a fixed lot size. Okay. Fixed lot size is FX. So what we are doing is we are selecting FX fixed lot size and planning procedure VV. Now where is this? If I go to MRP procedure, if I go here, and we have uh, so many MRP procedures, and one of them is manual reorder point planning procedure. Okay, so VV is manual reorder point planning procedure. So we go to VV. So this is VV. Now, because manual, so I send the rear point. So let us say the rear point for this material is 1000. This example. Who is the MRP controller? So, MRP controller is the person who is responsible for doing MRP function. You can choose any value. Now, here we have a lot size. So, we have a different lot size in key. So first we are selecting fixed lot size. So fixed lot size basically means when the materials come into certain fixed lot size only. So I go to the drop down. And here we have a fixed lot size FX. And then we hit enter. So when we say fixed lot size, and the system asks you the, how much is the minimum lot size? The minimum lot size is 400 pieces. Material come in the 
box of 400, 400, 400. How much I need? I need 1,000. Reorder point is 1,000. Manual lot size is 400. And then we hit enter. Oh, six lot size, 400. So we enter six lot size. Hit enter. Then we have here the plan delivery time means how many days it takes to deliver, etc. We can put it. So you know, we take one day, two day, one of days. We can put it whatever days we want, doesn't make a difference. Hit enter, hit enter, hit enter, hit enter, and in the validation class as we do. We could do 3000, right? And we say the material. So we created a material. We make a note of the material. So this is the material we created. Okay. So this is the material we created. 130. It. So this is the material we created and after creating this material, now I want to go to logistic. I want to go to materials management. Here we have MRP. MRP. Planning. And here we can use single line, single line MD03. We go to MD03. MD03 is the planning procedure. Now here we have we put our material 13048. We put our plant. Here we have a create purchase requisition. Do you want to create purchase requisition? So here we have a two choices. So here we have a two choices. When I run MRP, we have two choices. Choice number one, should I create purchase requisition? Or another option is, should I create plant order? So there are two choices. Okay. So I create a purchase requisition, should I create a plant order? You can do both. Now we know what is purchase requisition. What is plant order? So plant order is a document which can be created, which can be converted to create purchase requisition or production order in case of make or by decision. Now, what is the meaning of that statement? So meaning of this statement basically is that sometimes we buy an item, sometimes we make an item. Sometimes we know where we're going to always purchase this item. If we, we, if we know that we're going to purchase this item, then we can directly create a purchase requisition. Okay. But if we don't know if we're going to purchase this item or not, then we have something called make or buy decision. Is my voice coming to you all? Okay. 
Okay, that's fine. Thanks. Okay, so not sure what happened, but anyways, we can continue now. So here, I was giving the exercise which we're gonna do. So in this exercise, we talked about we're gonna use planning procedure VB. We're gonna use we use the lot size and key effect, which is fixed lot size. We create a material with MRP view. This is the material we created. We can run MRP. This is the transition code for MRP. And we were talking about when we run the MRP, then we have a two choices. In those two choices, we have an option of creating a, creating purchase requisition directly or creating a plant order directly. So we have a two choices. So we can create a purchase requisition or we can create a plant order. Okay. And then we can evaluate the result of MRP run. So here, if I go back, so this is uh, our MRP transaction, MD03, so I can use MD03 to run my, uh, I can run MRP, okay? Now I can put my material, I can put my plant, and then here, I can have a purchase requisition, so what I want, I say, I want one. So gun basically means I want purchase requisition. So I'm telling system that create purchase requisition for me. And I want purchase requisition to be created. Okay. And then we hit enter. Then we hit enter. So we have to enter twice. So it is running MRP. So we got some message in the bottom. MRP carried out for material 13048 and plant 1000, and we don't know what happened. Right? So it says MRP exit out, but we don't know what happened. So we go back. Now, here we have something called evaluation, and here we have a transaction code called MD04. In the transaction code MD04, we can basically verify that what we want. We can go to MD04, we hit enter. Now in MD04, what we have? In MD04, we say that, okay, this material 13048, in plant 1000, and the system has automatically created three purchase position. This is one, this is two, this is three. Three purchase position. Now why, why three? Because I'd say my reorder level is 1000. And then I said that fixed lot size is 400. Means when I buy the material, it's come in the multiple of 400, 400, 400. So because I need 1,000 and the minimum, uh, the quantity fixed lot size is 400. So in order to do 400 and 400 and next are 400 because it cannot, it cannot divide, it cannot break the box. So we got 400, 400, and 400. Okay. So we get it three percent equation got created. If I double click on it, I can convert this purchase equation into purchase order also. Okay. Now, this is what we saw that how we run MRP and how MRP run can create purchase equation and how purchase equation can be created in this purchase order. So I go back, I go to MD03 again, In MD03, and last time I put it one, and this time I put three. And then I run MRP again. I run MRP again. 
again system tell in the bottom the mrp carried out something happened we don't know what happened so we go back and uh, we again go back to mv04 we put the material we put the plant and then we hit enter okay. and then now see the plant order plant order plant order so now system has created plant order it is not created a purchase it has created a plant order that is what it has created okay. now if i double click on it then system takes me and it opens and create a purchase requisition there is a purchase requisition. you see the convert plant order to the purchase requisition and then we save it see the message in the bottom Plant order 36922 converted to purchase deposition 1001495. If I refresh, then I have a one purchase deposition and I have these two plant orders. If I double click on this purchase deposition, and then here I see purchase order. So now I can convert the purchase deposition into purchase order directly from here. It should take me to purchase order screen. Now it takes me to the purchase order screen. I put my purchase organization. I can select my vendor. I can enter my price. I got a green light and we save it. You want to save? Yes. I save it. Okay. So see the message in the bottom. The standard PO created under the number 4500. If I refresh it, now I create a purchase order. This is the purchase order. Okay. So now what we did? We evaluated MRP, then we run MRP, we created plant order, then we converted plant order to purchase requisition, and then we converted purchase requisition to purchase order. So we created. Now this is the whole end-to-end -end MRP cycle. Now I want to do one more iteration. So why, what I want to do here is So I want to do one more cycle. So we took a planning procedure VV, right? Lot sizing key, we took FX, but this time I want to take EX which is basically means lot For lot. Okay. Lot per lot. So it's lot for lot. Same thing. We want to create a material with MRP view. I want to run MRP. I want to evaluate. The result, the same thing as we did before, right? Okay, so now we go to material master. So let's go to material 
ms01 it is a material it enters we select mrp1234 views we enter we enter so we select mrp material we go to a base unit major the same stuff we hit enter we go to purchasing uh, group hit enter now in mrp type we select the mrp same for manual reader point planning we select uh, mrp same again 1000 mrp controller anybody then make a difference 000 in the lot sizing key last time i selected fx this time i want to select ex ex is lot for lot lot for lot then we hit enter then here we have a plant delivery time two days then we hit enter hit enter hit enter hit enter and then we put a valuation class and we put a price and then we sell it okay so we create another material but in this material we have a different lot sizing procedure this time we have a lot for lot everything else is same so in this material in the last material everything is same except here we have uh, this fixed lot size and here we have lot for lot other things are same quantity same everything is same so we get material also now i want to go and run mrp so again i go back to mb03 i want to create let us say purchase requisition I don't want to create as so I select one because I want to create for certification. I hit enter and I hit enter again. So I enter twice. Okay. So MRP carried out. Okay. What happened with MRP? So for that I go to MD04. Now when I go to MD04, when I hit enter here, and what we see. we have purchase requisition 100004496 and it is for 1000 dollars so now there is only one purchase requisition it's not three last time we had three this time we had only one because lot for lot there is no fixed constraint i need 1000 system get a one purchase requisition for 1000 okay. so that is how lot for lot works so we create a lot for lot okay. now if i want to convert into purchase order i go to purchase order I go to vendor. Enter my purchase organization. Enter my price, and then we save it. We get a purchase order. We save it, and if I refresh, then. system create a purchase order so purchase order got created okay so that is how this whole thing works okay so now we have done two iterations so i've done uh, 
you can try others also you can select this clutch chain key that lot chain key the steps are same with the two iterations and uh, if you want uh, other iterations we can do other iterations as well so same steps in the material master you send the procedure you put a lot of key you run and then you can see what actually happened with that okay so so it will create okay so now i want to do one more exercise so i want to go to mm01 i select my mrp 1 2 3 4 views and i also select my forecasting view and i hit enter So now I hit enter. Okay. And then I select. enter enter my purchasing group hit enter now here we have mrp type so if i go to drop down and i select mrp type vv so if we see here in our uh, material we have mrp type We need forecast based planning. So here we have forecast based planning. Hit enter. We enter the plant delivery time. Schedule margin key. If uh, in the case of production, if we want certain material. This is uh, select any value from top down. So zero zero one, which basically means how much is the float time. Okay. Now we come to the forecast view. Now here is the forecast view. So in the forecast view, we select the period indicator. m so i want to do for example weekly you can choose weekly monthly how much the forecast the period how many period you want to buy for 60 it says 60 or basically means lot of period lot of uh, month so i don't want 60 so let's say i want to do 6 how many more forecast in the future you want to do i said i want to do for 4 so four period in the future i want to take and then here we have a conjunction value i select conjunction value and then we can put what is my conjunction so i need uh, this week uh, i can post my conjunction whatever was my conjunction was okay hit enter Okay. We come back. So this is the conjunction value. 
then we go to we can see the forecast value this way. so system tells me one two three four because we have select four week to be forecast for the future okay this enter six we want four in the future i go to execute forecast so when i go to execute forecast so do you want to start from 720 which date you want to start so i say yeah, start from this period oh i want actually week indicator so now in the week indicator system says which date you want to start i say start from this date enter the historical data because i changed the period so you, need, you can enter the data again so now if you see this is the week wide right? week 29 28 27 29 so this is the week 29 okay So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. We go back because I change to the weekly. Then I execute forecast. Which date you want to start? Do you want to start with the week 29 or 23rd? Because current week is 29. I said, okay, start with the current week. Now here we have a different model. I want constant model. And I say forecast, forecast. Now, our system tells me that in this uh, situation, we require so our system saying that uh, week 29, week 30, week 31, 32, four weeks because we select four weeks. My requirement is 104, 104, 104, 104. I this is the quantity which is required and which is being forecasted. So that is a forecasted time by the system based upon past consumption value. Okay. I said okay, hit enter, hit enter. Hit enter, hit enter, put a valuation class, 3000, standard price, and then we say. So this is the material. I make a note of the material. And after putting that, I run my MRP, MD03. Do I want purchase requisition? Yes, hit enter. And MRP carried out. Okay, what happened? So we go to MD04. I go to MD04. Hit enter. Now here system tells me that for this week, for this week, and this week, system has created purchase requisition, one purchase requisition, another purchase requisition, another purchase requisition. In the same way, I can double click on my purchase requisition, I can convert these purchase requisition into my purchase order, hit enter, hit enter, And then we sell it. So we converted our purchase requisition into, and then we sell it. And if I save it, we got a purchase. So what we did? So we here we created the 
So we planning exercise. So we did the planning exercise using forecasting. So what we did, we created a material with following. What we did in that uh, we assigned planning procedure VV then. Assign planning procedure. We select a forecasting view and uh, we run forecasting in material using conjunction history. Then we did uh, we did MRP run, which is MD03. Then we evaluated MRP result, and then we converted purchase requisition into purchase okay. so this is the exercise or forecasting. So these are the three exercises which we did today. Okay. So, well, this is what um, I wanted to do today. Can you run MRP for internal plan? Yeah, you can do that as well. Okay, so these are uh, different MRP uh, exercise. Then I'm stopping here, and uh, we will. So and thank you. So I'm stopping the class, and I'm finishing the class today. Thank you all. Thank you guys. So this was another topic left and we have finished this topic as well. Okay. Thank you, please take care and please be in touch. Thank you.